Hello everyone, Marcelo here. I want to show you some of the new Rhino Inside Revit technology and how it works and how it can use to help us model some of our roof framing. So what you're going to do is uh, you go to your add-ins and you activate the Rhino Inside app for Revit. At the time I'm recording this, I am using the, the beta version of Rhino Inside, Rhino version 7. Uh, so it may be a little bit different as you watch these <laughs> for the months, future months. Uh, so we have Grasshopper right here, we're going to activate it. And what's nice about this is it actually is opening up a, an invisible version or a headless version of Rhino in the background, so you don't even need to deal with Rhino at all uh, if you don't want to. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Revit tab, new to, to Rhino inside Revit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show build, and we're going to say build beam by curve. Okay, so we'd feed in a curve, which is going to be the center line of those adaptive components, and we're going to feed it in a type. We're going to use a W12 by 26. We're using Imperial units today. So we need to first select all the instances of these lines, of these adaptive component families, and we need to extract the geometry. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the way that works is you basically need to go to your input, and then under that we say model category. So we're going to first select the model category in the hierarchy. The category is first, then the type, then the instance of the family. So in this case it is a generic model so we don't need to change that. Although if it was a different category you could change that. Uh, the next is you're going to need uh, element by type. Um, this is blank right now but uh, I'm sure as this product gets developed it'll change and there'll be something by default there. Okay this is the two types of the generic model category and we want this one which is uh, type beam. Okay next is we need to actually extract out the instances of this particular adaptive component type. So to do that we're going to go to element type filter and we're going to use a filter to the document and under document we're going to say document elements so that's going to get all the elements within the document and we just need to feed it in a filter so through the filter we're going to say we're going to use a filter type and we're just going to feed the filter into the elements so at this point now it should select every single we're going to look at a panel should select every single instance of that type in the project and there are six of them so it looks like we've got six here let's see if I can extend this out here we go six Okay, so we have six adaptive components. That's excellent. There's only one more thing we need to do before we actually use the build by curve is we need to extract the geometry. So if we go back to the Revit tab and then we go under elements, under elements there's an element geometry tab. This will extract all of the it'll extract all the geometry out of the Revit family. In this case there's only it's only a line and it'll convert it to grasshopper geometry. So we go ahead and feed that in and it has now converted it to grasshopper geometry which are curves. So you can see here that made it into curves as it should. Okay now these are the curves we're going to go ahead and feed right into the build the beam. The only thing we need is the type. So uh, we're going to use a W12 by 26. So since these two nodes were the ones that actually selected the type for the adaptive component we're going to just go ahead and copy and paste those again. Uh, we'll go ahead and use this one. And then that will be the one to, to uh, select the type for. So in this case the, the type is not going to be the generic model, it's going to be a structural framing type. And then we're, we're going to be using the W12 by 26. This selects the type. We feed that also into the type this one is level um, by default. Uh, we're just going to leave that blank, but you could feed in a, a level uh, as well to define the beam off a level. We'll just use default for now. And then when you look over to the Revit model, you can see it is now placing the beams. So if you were to move the adaptive component around, the beam would follow it as well. I hope this helps. Uh, this is also summarized in a one-page summary uh, that I can show you here. Basically just went through all the steps that we just did in a simple one-page format. If you need information just look this up on the blog post and thank you for listening.